Hello and welcome to the Leathercraft Masterclass 60 minute projects with me, Phil. And in this video, I'm going to be taking you through step by step how to make a skiving knife sheath. Now, apart from the fact that it looks cool, there are other reasons that you'd want to make one of these for your workshop. Chiefly, it's safety. And the number one thing about a skiving knife is its razor, razor sharp edge. So even if you don't store them like I do on the wall, any time that you bring it to the work table, you run the risk of either cutting yourself or damaging the end of your blade if you knock it into a paring stone or it touches another piece of metal, for example. So when you're using it, when you stop using it for a moment, but you want to keep it on your table, simply pop it back on and you and your knife are nice and safe. And then when you pop it back on the wall, you can leave it on there or you can take it off. So this project is going to require some vegetable tanned leather around 1.2 to 1.5 millimeters thick. This is a great opportunity to use up some offcuts and some scrap pieces uh, that you don't use for a project, for example. And if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below. Now let's get to the table and begin our project. Where we go. Okay, so as mentioned before, the leather that we want is slightly thinner than your skiving knife. So two millimeter skiving knife, 1.5 millimeter leather. If you have a thicker skiving knife, you can go a little bit higher. If you have a thinner skiving knife, you'll need to go a little bit lower. Okay, so we have our skiving knife here. We're gonna put that to the side for now. Card, this is just basic craft card. It's nothing special. It's just uh, some brown card, 0 0.8 millimeters thick. Doesn't have to be any uh, particular measurement, but that's what I'm using here. So I'm gonna make a straight cut because this was just a freehand cut. I'm gonna make a nice straight cut using a ruler. Okay, and that's gonna be our top edge. And we're gonna use that to place the knife down like so. And on this, I actually have, as you can see, a wrap. So I'm not gonna go any further than the wrap. If you don't have a wrap, you can go as far in as you want to, it's absolutely fine. But I'm bringing it up to the wrap there, okay? Now taking a, let me just adjust this camera. Zoom in just a fraction and bring the ISO up very slightly, there we go. So taking a pencil, okay, you don't want anything else pencil, otherwise you can ruin your edge. We're just going to trace the outline, including the cutting edge. And this is the basis of our skiving knife template, okay? What I'm going to do now is just give an allowance of six millimeters. So I'm gonna create a six millimeter allowance all around the outside. And to do that, I'm gonna take another ruler and I'm gonna measure six millimeters. So we're making an oversized template. Okay, so six millimeters there, taking our pencil again and making another mark. So we've got three edges. Turn that around. So again, six millimeters, because of course we need to make a sheath that's slightly larger than the knife itself, otherwise we wouldn't have a sheath. And same again, so six millimeters. Okay, so now you can see I have a six millimeter border all the way around. All right, and I'm gonna be using that for the front, for the back, and also the welt, uh, or the spacer that goes in between. So I'm gonna cut out from the outside dimensions, okay? So from that six millimeter margin, I'm gonna cut out my external dimensions. So one side, tough card this stuff. And now the front, so removing the front. So there we go, so we have our template and as you can see it's slightly bigger okay so we have an excess all the way around now we're going to put our skiving knife safely to one side because it doesn't have a sheath yet so be careful 
and we're going to take our leather. Okay, again, vegetable tan leather. This is actually quite soft. I wouldn't go any softer than this. This is Vachetta leather. Okay, Italian vegetable tanned with uh, all sorts of fats and greases uh, impregnated in there. I believe it's what Vuitton uses. Uh, probably not this particular finish, but anyway, undyed vegetable tan leather. It can be dyed vegetable tan leather, any color, any texture you wish. It's really up to you. So what we need are three cutouts, okay? So three pieces, but on one of them, we're gonna have to turn the template over, okay? So we've got a mirror image, one for the front, one for the back. So I'm just going to cut out three sections for myself. Okay, so this one here has got a little bit of a mark on it, so I'm actually just gonna keep that for the welt and cut this out. Guys, if any of you are actually uh, managed to get your materials together in time to join me, let me know if you're, uh, you're actually doing this. But remember, this is gonna be on YouTube, guys, uh, with a little bit better quality, or one would hope. Okay, so our first piece has been cut out. That's what we're looking for. And now I need an opposite piece. So we're gonna take our card from the marking side up. And we're gonna flip it upside down. That way we're gonna have a mirror image uh, for the front or the rear side. And just keeping pressure on my uh, template there, my pattern, so I can turn it around. Always double checking that the pattern hasn't actually moved. Vachetta leather is a delight to cut, I must say. Okay, so we have a mirror image like so. So that's the grain. So that's the grain side there. We have a mirror image and that's the flesh side. And we're gonna take one more. Doesn't really matter which side it is, to be honest. And we're gonna cut out a third. All right, so now we have three pieces in total. Now I'm gonna grab a set of wing dividers, all right? Now remember we had a six millimeter excess on the outside to get our external dimensions for all our pieces. I'm gonna take one, make sure it's matched up. Okay, so this is going to be, this is going to be the welt we're going to mark the internal part of this five millimeters. That's gonna give us a one millimeter gap all the way around. So external cut is six millimeters. We're now gonna bring our wing dividers up to five millimeters. So just using a ruler there, five millimeters. And I'm going to make a line on the inside of this piece here. All right, everyone's quite and focused on what he's doing. Yeah, usually that happens. All right, so to take a little quick look there, you can see that I've made a five millimeter line. Sorry, I don't know that one. <laughs> I didn't say your name, Alexa. Now I did. So there's a five millimeter line all the way on the inside. So I'm gonna cut that out. So finding that line that I've created, I'm just gonna follow that line, that five millimeter line with my craft knife. Coming into the corner, I'm just gonna turn that round so I don't overcut. Okay, so now we have our spacer, also known as a welt. So if I put the welt up to the Skyven knife, you can see there's a little bit of a gap all the way around just to give a little bit of wiggle room. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna add a little bit of contact adhesive to all these pieces. So where are we gonna add contact adhesive? We're gonna add a little contact adhesive to five millimeters on the inside of the internal and external piece. Make sure you're not adding contact adhesive to the grain side. It needs to be on the flesh side. Okay. 
You can mark a line if you want to, guys. If you feel more confident doing that, I'm just going by I. And I'm just drawing that along there. Okay, you might be able to see that. There's a little bit of a border all the way around with our glue, our contact adhesive. Uh, if you don't like using solvent-based, you can use water-based, but I need the speed in this one. Normally, I'd also be using a glue plate, but uh, time is of the essence. We're 15 minutes in. We're not doing too bad. The stitching and the uh, finishing of the edges takes a little bit of time now. Now, I am going to get a piece of tissue paper for this because I need to add some contact adhesive to the welt. I'm going to add my contact adhesive there. Obviously, this is a 60 minute project, guys, but uh, feel free to take your time. <laughs> All right, there's no need to rush. The longer you take on it, obviously, the nicer it's going to be. And remember, you can use uh, virtually any kind of leather. If you want to use something that's exotic, it might be a little bit too soft. Just remember, you'll need to glue it to some reinforcement, some veg tan leather, some bonded leather, or something that's going to add some stiffness to it. So you can, uh, you can play around with that. Uh, the spacer also prevents the knife from cutting the thread of the seam. That's very correct, okay? Um, so there is going to be leather before getting to the thread. But as the knife tries to cut into the leather, it also has a wedging effect. So it's trying to push the leather apart as it goes through, but there's tension from the stitches pulling everything in. So it can only really go so far unless you really gave it the beans. Okay, I'm going to give it uh, another minute or so. Uh, I've made lots of sheaths, but never thought about giving uh, a bit of space. I'll do that next time. Yeah, it, it, really, it really depends uh, on the construction of it. That's something you would need to test out. That's not um, something to live by, obviously. Cool. All right, so let's get this stuck in. So find the one that corresponds. Okay, so one of these is going to correspond to your side. And just very carefully place it down. I like to start with the very point, so point to point. And I'm going to stick down one side before the other, but notice I've got my fingers in the way so that this side can't stick down, so I can just focus on keeping this one nice and accurate. And remember, when it comes to finishing your edges, the more level they are, the easier a time you're going to have. Okay, so that's one side done. And now I'm going to go along the front here. And now I'm into the other corner. And then I can simply keep those edges nice and aligned and bring them along. Now the leather flexes, sometimes you'll find that there's a little bit of an excess on there. You can uh, trim that off if necessary. There isn't on this, but sometimes there is. We're going to grab a uh, polished hammer we use in leather work. And we're just going to give this a little tap down. Very simple. Okay, so roughing tool. Okay, this is a roughing tool uh, by NT Cutter. Okay, November Tango Cutter, NT Cutter. And we're going to rough the grain of the welt, okay? I think it's because of my dark top, it's making this luminous, but we're going to roughen that welt there, okay? Because right now it's a, a closed grain. If you don't have one of these, you can just use the end of your knife and then scrape it, but uh, right tool for the right job and all that. Okay, and now we're going to add some contact adhesive where we just roughened. So just that five millimeter strip of leather all the way around there. And then we'll let that dry for a few minutes. And try and keep the contact adhesive as much as you can away from the outside edge where you're going to be finishing. We are going to be uh, 
dealing with that, making sure that edge is nice and level. But the less glue there is, the easier your life is going to be. Okay, so contact adhesive there on the outside welt. We're just gonna let that dry. We've still got a five millimeter border on here and that's where we're gonna be sticking next. Okay, pricking irons. What pricking irons am I gonna use? Um, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I'll let you guys choose on live. Shall I choose the 10 stitches per inch vintage iron? So this is a very old vintage iron or Kevin Lee 2.7 millimeter modern iron. So I'll let you guys on the live choose. Uh, vintage or modern? All right, you got about a minute to choose before you're ready to stick. <laughs> In the meantime, I'm gonna grab uh, a mallet here so that we don't damage our pricking irons. So one vote for modern, 30 seconds left. One vote for vintage. <laughs> Don't make it a draw, it'll come down to a penalty shootout and I'll start getting flashbacks. <laughs> so modern vintage, modern vintage, vintage. Oh, so we got through, oh. You know what? <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep it modern, guys. I'm gonna keep it modern. Everybody has access to a modern iron, don't they, really? Okay, so this piece here, which has the welt on it, we're now gonna stick it down to this piece here, which has the glue on it. And again, starting with the corners, I like to start with the corner and just making sure that any other areas don't prematurely stick down. So keep your fingers in the way if possible. So take a second to get the first part right because uh, you wanna start as you mean to go on. And then the final side. Good, okay, so we've got the beginnings of what looks like a little sheath. So let's give that a little hammer down. All right, so. The next thing we're gonna do is get this ready for prick marking with our modern iron here. And we're gonna take our wing dividers and I'm just gonna take a look at the top where you can actually see the welt on the sides. And I'm gonna reduce my wing dividers in till it's about halfway across the welt, okay? Which is 2.5 millimeters, so you can double check that. Yeah, we're at 2.5 millimeters. Uh, so decide on which side you want to use. So I'm gonna place my skiving knife in there like so. And I know that this is the front of my skiving knife, so this is where we're going to place our stitches. So I'm gonna make a line all the way around the border. Not the top, obviously, we're not stitching there. That's where your skiving knife is going to be going in. And for this, we're gonna go simply over the top of the line. So a lot of the time I like to go side onto the line. This one, we're gonna go directly over the top, okay? Why do you carry me so many pens? Because <laughs> the pen is mightier than the skiving knife. Uh, right, where we are, oh, there we are. Okay, so starting on the top on one end, so give about 1.5 millimeters from the top. And if you want to guys, you can absolutely go all the way through. I'm gonna be using an awl for this, but if you wanna go all the way through, feel free to do that. Nothing wrong with doing that. You have to have some very thin prongs because we're hammering through a five millimeter welt. If your prongs are too thick, it can really stretch it out. So uh, for that reason, I, I like to use an awl because obviously it's a lot thinner. I'm just going through about halfway. Right the way down to the bottom. And just to, just to let you know, this is 2.7 millimeters. Okay, it's just what I'm choosing. 
three millimeters is fine. 3.38 is fine. 3.85 is a little industrial perhaps, but absolutely do what you feel is right. And all the way up to the top, which leaves a nice little gap there as well. So let's take a look at that. So we can see there that we have all our prick marks all the way around. And now we're going to bring in our stitching clamp so we can stitch this up. So the all I'm going to use is the uh, Jerome David or Jerome David all. Okay, the famous titanium all. So I'm going to bring you guys in. I'm just going to bring in the clams first. And attach them to the table. These are little Dream Factory small ones. I'm going to bring you a little bit closer in. All right, a little bit side on so you can see what's going on a little bit better. So we're going to start on one side, this side here. We're going to stitch back, stitch down, turn it upside down and all the way along. So I stitch right handed, so my right, uh, the awl is going in on the right side. So I'm going to start up here. Try and get it nice and close. Can you see how close I actually have these uh, stitch marks? to the actual top of the clams itself, all right? Any lower, we've, we're coming off the welt and we're not gonna have much rigidity as we stitch. So it's just something to be, uh, to be aware of. Okay, so we're 28 minutes in. So I'm gonna start two holes back. I'm gonna stitch forward. And then I'm gonna stitch all the way back again. So we're starting with a couple of back stitches uh, just for strength, so it's the top of the sheath, so that's where it's going to get uh, most of its stress from. Uh, I am going to stitch this with a cast, if you're wondering. Uh, did you sand or roughen the inside of the stitching clamps and then apply the leather? I honestly don't remember. Um, probably. I don't think it's absolutely necessary, depending on what kind of glue you're using. If, it's a, if it has a heavy varnish on there, perhaps you need to roughen it. Okay, one thing I'm noticing already is it's moving in the clams. It's a little bit more tension. Guys, if you have any questions, uh, I can kind of stitch and look up periodically just to uh, see what people are saying. It's gonna take more than uh, five minutes to do this, I think. <laughs> Two point seven millimeters, so we're not pulling too tightly. Not like you would on a larger stitch. Just allowing that thread to sink below the surface slightly and that's it. Now if you really want to, you could actually uh, take a grooving tool and groove for your stitches. I don't think that's really necessary on this, but if that's the kind of look you prefer, or if that's what you're used to doing, there's nothing wrong with doing that either. So we're stitching up the short side here. And then momentarily we're going to be switching to go along the front. And then we're going to do some edge finishing, guys. We're going to do some edge finishing. I'm going to do a waxed edge finish on this one, which I kind of like the look of on this Vachetta leather. Uh, it gives a nice deep dark color. Okay, so short side done. We're turning it around in the clams. Remember, nice and close to the top if you can. 
So it's, you know, you can just about stitch with it. It's, it's that close. It's not impacting your technique, but it's very, very close. And that's what we're looking for. Uh, fortunately, I don't understand Spanish. If anyone does, then feel free to uh, translate any questions. As I mentioned before, Jerome David All. The thread I'm using is Philip Chinois, um, probably one that I use most commonly. It is the 532 size with uh, John James 004 needles. The thread is pre waxed with a little beeswax prior to this, just to give myself a little bit of a head start in case we weren't making very good time. We're doing okay, actually. We're doing all right. I'm seeing a lot of requests to be in my live today. I think that's by accident. Maybe one of these days I'll be mean enough to uh, accept an accidental live request and then suddenly we'll see your face appear on the camera. <laughs> That'd be a rude awakening. Worse than when you turn on your camera and it's accidentally in selfie mode. <laughs> I give up for the moment too quick for me. That's, that's absolutely fine. Don't worry. This is going to be on YouTube. You'll be able to, uh, to do it. Just a little tip guys, while I'm stitching here, uh, I know sometimes people have difficulty with uh, thread getting knotted. There's actually a telltale sign that that's about to happen. And it's a very easy uh, fix. If ever you have your thread and you're in the middle of stitching, if you hold it out like this in a W position, even just one side, if you bring it in and you notice the thread excessively twists, then it's time to drop it, let it dangle, pick them back up and start stitching again. It's just because it's picking up a twist. Now, if I put an artificial twist, I'll do it in this side here. Let's have a look at the direction of the thread. Okay, so I'm gonna put an artificial twist in there. I'm actually twisting it with my fingers. We'll see the difference now. If I bring them both in, can you see that? It's twisting in on itself. Now, depending on your technique, as you're stitching, this can naturally start occurring. Uh, it might be your technique. It could just be the way the leather is stitching. It's twisting it slightly. Um, it just means you, every so often you go to bring your thread in and it starts wrapping around itself. It's time to drop it because when it's, you know, the thread is sticking, it's heavily waxed. So if I have that here and it's twisted in, if I start pulling that in, you can already see a knot beginning to form, okay? And you think, oh, the thread needs waxing. No, waxing will actually make it worse because you're making the thread more sticky. A slick thread can actually pull through that. So just a little quick tip for those of you who find uh, knotting an issue. So every so often, just drop it. I can quite clearly see that it's not happening to this thread to any great degree. So it's not necessary. So as I bring my needles in, I can just kind of look down out the corner of my eye and see. So I can kind of predict when it could possibly happen. All right, so coming up to the end here. Drop my thread. And I'm coming onto the long side. So this is where we've stitched so far. So we've come down here, all the way along here. And now we can just finish off at the top there. And then we can just uh, finish off our edges. Very, very simple. Just a quick little project. If ever you want a good excuse just to practice your hand stitching, make something useful. Or if you have a, a spare hour or two.
alongside now. I've got a jeweler to fashion blades in steel, best thing I ever did. Interesting. Ooh. Dream factory turning into a nightmare there. So you're saying you've got somebody who's a jewelry maker to make you some knives. I stitch the same but opposite. I stitch as if I'm watching your screen. Interesting. I mean, uh, this is a, a mirror image right now, as in this is my right hand with the all in it. I think it's because it's the front facing camera. Almost there guys, almost there. And again, like we did at the beginning, we started with two back, fin uh, back stitches. I'm going to finish with two back stitches just to reinforce that end. And give a little bit of strength to the opening, which is always uh, the part on the sheath that gets the most stress. Oh, the titanium ore, the blades are very soft, so I, so I buy steel ones, okay. The, uh, the blades aren't titanium, the, the titanium bit, apparently they're high speed, the titanium bit is the ferrule and also the back end of it, so that's the tiny. On the inside as well is a, a long threaded rod, but that's not titanium, that's just uh, stainless steel. Same with the grub screw or the set screw on the inside. Yeah, titanium I think is probably goes up to the kind of like mid 40s on the Rockwell hardness scale. I could be wrong, but it's uh, outside of diving knives, it doesn't really make anything uh, really useful. Move that up a little bit. <clears throat> almost at the end I like to go all the way through with my pricking iron but I've struggled to find a good well polished version can you recommend a good brand uh, Wuta Kevin Lee they're pretty good uh, 4Z irons which are reversible if you like thin prongs I mean that's that's the kitty these are the ones that I've, I've had personally good experience with, experiences with. All right, three more stitches to go. Yeah, uh, Kevin sent me these, I didn't buy them, he sent me them, but you can see the little uh, bevel on the top there is glistening in the light. Um, and they're very, very well polished. You can see right there. So they, they pull out the, the leather reasonably well, especially considering they're 2.7 millimeters. Last stitch, and then we can do a, a couple back stitches. Yeah, the uh, shaft diameter on the Jerome David All, by the way, if, if you want to make your own from a steel rod, pre-hardened steel rod, uh, it's a fraction under three millimeters. Okay, so let's give that a snippy snip. So snipping nice and close. Right, I'm gonna move you guys back now. 
camera and we are, we're all good. Right, so at this point, I'm going to put my little all sheath on there. Everything has a sheath here. And I'm just gonna tap that down, okay, from the, a bit of wax there, uh, from the face side. Everything wants to vibrate. Okay, so there we go. Let's try and see if you can see that. It's yellow thread, so it's a little bit difficult to see. You'll probably see it on the YouTube thumbnail a little bit better or on YouTube itself. Let's get a little bit of a close up there for the YouTubes. So you can actually see. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna tidy up those edges. So those edges right now, they're not exactly rough, but they could do with smoothing up very slightly. So I'm gonna find myself an elevated platform. Should we have a quick test now that we've stitched everything, guys? Let's have a quick test to make sure that it fits. That'd be annoying if it didn't. Okay, so just a quick test to see if it fits. It does fit and you can hold it, but still easily remove okay and that's because there's a little bit of tension the welt on the sides okay the little spacer is thinner than this so there's always going to be a little bit of tension which is good so as i said before elevated platform and i'm going to take one of these now you can use sandpaper guys if you want to use sandpaper uh, you can trim it up very slightly with your skiving knife uh, i find these actually really cool this is just a miniature plane so it's a mini plane See it on eBay, Amazon, AliExpress, and all that kind of thing. It's, uh, I think it's actually designed for woodworking, but. All right, so let's uh, take a little bit off. And this just neatens up the edge, so it makes it as if it was a pure cut edge. Okay, so it just aligns everything up very, very quickly. Initially, you'll probably notice that the front is rubbing away all the stray contact adhesive, which does end up there. On this side. Okay, and that gives us a nice smooth edge as if it was a cut edge. So, I mean, you can make this oversize with a much bigger margin and then cut it back after stitching. That's a fantastic way of doing it. This is just another alternative. Now, as you've been doing that, it does push the sides up a little bit. So while that's there, I'm gonna take uh, number three, number three edge beveler, uh, which let me just give you the dimensions for that. If uh, So we're looking at uh, 1.5, 1.4, 1.5. Just going to pull some thread through that with some compound on it a couple times just to give that edge a bit more bite. Okay, so taking off all the corners there. And what I am going to do actually is I'm going to nibble the tip off very slightly. Make it easier to edge finish. Like so. So right at the end, we've got like a very, very sharp point at the moment. I'm just gonna remove that. A little bit more. Okay. And of course, edge bevel that too. Because it's a flat spot. Good, okay, now at this point, if you had time, uh, you know, I don't really have time, I've got 14 minutes left before this is over, so uh, I'm gonna wax this, but you can burnish this, you can uh, burnish the top as well, get a nice polish on the top, using a little bit of cloth and a, some burnishing solution. 
Uh, I'm going to speed things up. I'm going to use some wax and take myself a single crease. Now, if you have an electric edge creaser, such as this, okay, obviously a clean version, please. Uh, you can use this. This is a wax spatula tip and it actually works very, very well for this, but you can still uh, do it just with a single crease. All right, always start by warming up the shaft, uh, which draws heat. So if you just warm the tip, the shaft will draw the heat from the tip. So start by warming the shaft and that stays nice and warm. There's no more dignified way of saying it guys, I'm sorry. Okay, so taking a block of wax, just melting there. If it's smoking, it's probably a little bit hot, but that's fine. What I'm doing is I'm just kind of rubbing it up. And the heat is also smoothing the fibers down at the same time. Just watch out for drips. Okay, so just periodically dip, bring it onto the edge, move it backwards and forwards. If it's the thirsty edge, just keep giving it wax. Okay, once you've got wax on there, don't put the tip into the flame anymore. Otherwise, you'll just get burnt wax. That heat will transfer quite nicely. So yeah, that warmth, that heat is just melting the wax, but also ironing down like a clothing iron, all the stray fibers. And of course, at the top. A little bit more heat there. There we go. All right, what comments do we have? I have the stubby green handle bevelers. Are the long ones worth the investment? It depends. If, if the green ones aren't doing the job and not giving you the desired outcome, then yes, they are. If it's working fine, then no, they're not. So, dirty tip, dirty tips. Yes, shameful. Absolutely. Uh, you're absolutely right. Okay, so just getting some cloth now, just to show you right now. So it's just waxed on the edges, you can see. So it's darkening, which is quite nice. We're just going to neaten that up a little bit, placing it down, just working the edge, working the corners back and forth. Okay, and then the actual edge itself. Obviously, we're not going to have absolute perfection on a very speedy project, but this is just to keep our knife nice and, nice and safe and also keep our hands protected. Okay, so a really basic edge on there, just nicely waxed and protected. And that's what we're looking for. A little bit of excess wax there. Just going to heat that up. There's still some residual heat in here, so we can just 
sort that out. Okay, so should we give that a little bit of decoration? I think we should give that some decoration. Uh, right, what should we use? Right, let's take a adjustable crease. So we've got an adjustable crease. So we've got about eight minutes left. And I'm just going to measure here. I'm just gonna have a crease just on the inside of the stitches, okay? So not on the outside, just on the inside towards the center. You'll see in a second. Okay, just a cold crease, a little bit more on that one. And that's perfect, okay? I'm just gonna heat up the creasing side, not the guide side. If you heat up the guide as well, you'll start melting the edge again. Come on. Oh, it's refusing, of course, lives. Not too much heat. Very easily burn the leather. And flipping it over, same again. I think there's enough heat on this to be honest. Do the whole thing. And at the very top. So there we go. Very, very simple. Let's see if I can get that in shot for you guys on uh, Instagram there. It's a little bit of a decorative crease, but you'll see that. Uh, I'll do some stories a little bit later. So let's give that a bit of a fit and place that in there. Oh, that's lovely, okay. Just the right amount of tension there, but easily slips off and that's gonna keep our knife nice and protected when it's on the table in use. You wanna keep it in play, but you wanna keep it out of the way for now and then use it again in a little bit. You don't wanna put it away. Knife sheath, basic, easy to do took uh, 55 minutes. So there you go, 55 minutes. If you take a little bit longer, you can make something a little bit more finer. The more time you take on something, the better, but obviously this is pretty much just to fulfill a purpose to keep your knife safe and also to keep you safe. So if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching this. Those on Instagram, I really appreciate you guys tuning in, asking questions, keeping the conversation going. It uh, makes this a lot easier for me to do, especially when it feels like uh, you guys are in the room with me as well. So uh, keep me company. Thank you very much for that. If you have any questions, uh, just leave a comment below on YouTube or shoot me a DM on Instagram. But I thank you for your time, guys, and I will see you soon in the next 60 Minute Crafts. Until then, see you next time.